I think it's uh, undeniable that our number one problem nowadays is the lack of silence and contact with what is our first book of revelation, creation, where God speaks to us first uh, through majesty, through beauty, through harmony, through everything that you find in creation. But like if there's no silence, I don't think you have a capacity to hear him speaking to you through creation. So why would you come out to a rock in the middle of the ocean like Skellig Michael? We're actually on Skellig Michael right now. I can't believe it, but... Uh, we saw coming on the boat, the stairs, the steps that the monks carved. This side, then there's another entrance on the back as well, which they carved. Um, this would be obviously after the fact, what we're walking on now. But uh, this is the end of the earth. Like, so if Ireland's already the last spot, this island, which is 12 kilometers, about nine miles in the ocean, this is the, this is the end of the earth. So that's why they came here. It's kind of like a, a fortress, really, of protection and of prayer. And I think at the end of the day, solitude. Like the monks probably would have found, like this is the most, I don't know, perfect place for that, to find solitude with God and nature. I think we're almost at the top, but we just walked up, I don't know how many hundreds of hand carved stone steps that they apparently were just taking off the, the mountain and, and carving them by hand, making the steps. There's two big peaks here. Um, and then between them is just like this valley. It's called Christ Saddle. And uh, it's on the other end, there's also like a beehive hut on the top. But they obviously came here when they first came here, they lived in caves. There's two, two caves on the other end which they would have lived in. And as they were living there, they slowly would have started building their cells. Because obviously, up here, they would have been the most fiercest of elements. If you're, you're talking about right in the middle of the Atlantic. I think this is the top, dude. It took 10 minutes. And so, why would you come out to a rock in the middle of the ocean like Skellig Michael? First of all, because the monks were going to find solitude. They were going to find alone time in silence. And then just looking around, it's, it's mind-blowing um, beauty that you find in creation. So these guys are creating a cell, like an interior sanctuary, where you're in contact with God in creation but through size. So this is the top of Skelling Michael. We just went past all of the beehive huts, which they're they're unbelievably like architecturally um, built. When you go in there, it's kind of square in the base and then it goes up more circular. So I guess the idea is that the way they're built, once you're in there, you're not gonna get wet. No water's gonna enter in here. And you're talking about like a mountain that's jutting out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So like this place in the winter time must be unbelievable with the lashing rain and the, the elements that are bashing against them. So they would have just had this construction, which it's to this day is still here. And, and the way it's built is, it is mind blowing. There's a cemetery as, as well. I think they, what they say is that they only live to be about 40 years old. Just, I guess the conditions and like what you're, you're dealing with here is, that's what it is. 40 years is what it gives you. But the idea for me, what's really sticking out is that you come out here. So first of all, it's right. Like they came out here to, to ward off evil. You know, that's what they said. She's like, this is at the ends of the earth. So they're here to like be a, a bastion against the evil that's coming in on the mainland through their prayers and sacrifices. But it's also like a place where they encounter God. I mean, technically, if you think about it, God could be speaking to you over a dozen times a day, at least trying to. But the fact is like, if you're out there in the world and you're bombarded cons constantly with noise and with distractions, uh, you're not gonna be able to hear him throughout those 12 times. So what do the monks do? They come to a place of solitude. This place is, is extremely quiet. 
it's true that there's other people coming here, you know, a bit of tourism, but like you can imagine this place as being just completely isolated, solitude, silence, encouraging an, an, an environment of prayer. So these monks, like us, they were able to hear God, see God in creation. The fact that nature's screaming of, of the creator and, and why they're, they're here and who made them, that also speaks to the monks also and helps them in their prayer. And so you're be like, well, what do I do? Like, cause I, I understand that's probably my problem. I'm probably like too caught up in, in, in too much noise. I'm constantly moving, constantly moving, but I'm not going anywhere. How do I, how do I find that? Like, do I go to a mountain and just become a hermit? Yes and no. Like you do have to go to your interior hermitage. There's a cell within you, your own little monastery that you can have in the state of grace. That, that space can be created and you can go in there and you can find God. And he's waiting for you there, but you do have to put down circumstances and boundaries. So you do have to create silence in your life. You have to cut out a lot of noise because if there's an excess of exterior noise, it's very probable that you're gonna have a lot of interior noise as well. And if there's a lot of interior noise, it's gonna be impossible to hear God's voice and it's gonna be impossible to see him or experience him. In, in creation. So what do you do? You find these elements in your life that are creating too much noise. It's usually um, so do you, it's yeah, usually social media or like anything else that's electronic that's that. pulling you out. <laughs> you need to cut with that so that you can go in and I guarantee you uh, if you're in the state of grace through confession you're going to experience him on a first-hand basis within your heart and also you're going to start seeing him more in creation. So maybe these monks of scale like Michael intercede and pray for us. The silence is the key to, to everything. There's no prayer life, there's no contact with God unless you have that fertile ground, which is silence. It's where the seed gets implanted, embedded, and that's where you can actually contact with it. Does someone want to pet him? Me and Ink. I dare you. All right, show him. School for it. If he bites you, your finger's off. <laughs> well, if a parrot could bite your finger off? I can't have a parrot. No. All like I know like is a, if you touch it from like a shoe or something, and like that thing is coming straight out of my hand. Do you think that would work? It's <laughs> alright. Do you think? You could, yeah. He's friendly. Look at him. He's very nice. No, but. Oh.